life is always on our side. It really is. Even when we think, why is this happening to me? How could this happen? Why am I suffering? Why am I ill? It literally is to give you something better. Gabby is a holistic health professional, philanthropist, and founder of Regenerative Pathway Therapy. Her work deals with the physical, emotional, and mental mindsets with regards to our health. Gabby has helped many heal, including herself. She's a good friend and was part of the Justice League of Healers that helped Maria's mom, Lisa. Better Together in the Heal Squad, are so excited to welcome Miss Gabby Picarelli. Thanks, Gab. How are you? Thank you. I'm great. How are you guys? We're okay. You know, we're okay. Um, life is continuing and uh, keeping dad busy and keeping Maria busy. And um, yeah, yeah, it's a, a little, it gets, you know, a little better every day, I think. How about I, you? I must say, I mean, I'm great, but I must say that, and I've said this to Maria many times that I'm just so honored to know a family like yours because it's really tremendous when you go through something you know for as long as you've had and as intensely as you've had to live over the last few years that um the love and the bond that you all share is just incredible like you stepping in to help out and everything that you've done all of you that you've helped each other along the way has been so inspiring so i mean i just really um i'm so honored to be here with you today but just in general it's just such such a beautiful example of of true love and and how we can all come together to help yeah. i think i get you know maria a lot of people will say to maria thank you for showing me how to be a better daughter thank you for showing me how to be a better family member thank you for showing me how to take care of a parent and i feel like i don't know I was always kind of assumed to be like that in my family because you just love your mom and dad. They brought you here and you just feel that sense of duty to send them off. Um, but Maria obviously felt that too. And I think more people want to be like that. But then I see a lot of kids just get kind of deer in the headlights. They just mm -hmm. kind of like, wait, I've been the baby, even at 40. I've been the, wait, what? Now I have to, uh, uh, and they kind of are like turtles on their backs. It's not... It's not that they're bad, or but they just kind of don't know what to do. And I, 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 as I'm processing this myself, I'm seeing that Maria has taught people, you know, about your duty, and you know about being present, and 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 you know what what you can do. And I, I think should do. But again, I, I want always without judgment because you know everyone's situation is different. But I, I just feel like if you're a family, you're a team, and mm -hmm. if you have a team, that's what you're kind of supposed to do. I don't know. I've always had a team approach myself, so. And you know what, like not everybody's family is perfect. Like we've all been oh my God. through, Please. you know, our own set of, of resentment and anger and emotions related to how we were raised and why wasn't it like that? And, you yeah. know, the things that were lacking. But at the end of the day, I, I, you know, I truly believe that we're going through life and it's a school and we're all doing the best we can, really. We are all doing the best we can. And even your parents, if you ever have any resentments towards what they did to you or you know things that were not done as you thought i mean they only knew what they knew that's it. they were doing the best they could yeah. yeah you have to remind people all the time about you know parents that were say hardcore alcoholics and super abusive um who are now like you know reformed to as best they could be and i i have just remind them like listen a lot do you really think this person woke up every day and said today's the day i'm going to be the worst parent i can be i cannot wait to terrorize my kid they, they, they most of them just did their best you know with the tools they had often many were too young or it came from flawed family systems too mm -hmm. and um and other than taking that information and processing it to use it in your own life how you can parent yourself or parent other people taking it to the point of being a victim or blaming them or or hating them i don't know i just feel like it's destructive and by the way i've done it before so i don't want to like act like i haven't been there i've done it i've just come through the other side and now i'm at the point with my mom oh my goodness i think it's like every call now i just crack her up on something like yeah. today she said to me she was you know do you remember when you were four i had to take you to homeschooling my mom was a teacher she said but she did homeschooling for a period where she would go to different kids houses and teach them 
I said, yes, mother, I remember it. And again, that's one of the reasons why I am screwed up to this day. And I blame you. And she just started cracking up because she knows I'm joking around and having fun with her, you know, but, but, um, but yeah. And I said to my mom, you know, she's like, we, you know, we, then it went to serious conversation. She said, you know, you know, we did okay. We did our best. Like I said, mom, you got, you were like 22 to like, I, tw I mean, to 28 and having us uh, or even younger, uh, how I'm like amazed you did what you did. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And this really brings me to sort of what what I would really love to to talk about and share is that, you know, initially when I started out working as a therapist, it was very physical. Like I would look at the human body and I would say, all right, this person has frozen shoulder and there are techniques that I was trained to do. I, I started out actually with foot reflexology, believe it or not. And I said, you know what, we can resolve this by, you know, loosening up the fascia, getting into the joint, you know, um, looking at other corresponding areas and the, the shoulder will be, will be just fine. But as I started working in this field, I thought, you know, why did that even come about in the first place? And I started asking questions because I am quite inquisitive and, yeah, and I really want to know why, why yes. did that happen? You know, if it was an, an injury, okay, well, that's, it, there's one way to explain it but how, what else is happening and why is this perhaps reoccurring and it dawned on me one day literally like this message from a higher source i i dropped my bags i remember exactly where i was and i dropped my bags and i said to myself oh my god i just figured out the reason why people suffer the suffering the dis-ease in the body why it all comes about and i said it is all to do with unresolved emotional conflicts within but it was such a strong sensation and such an emotional moment that like i still get emotional i can see about. you're a super sensitive person and so you probably have to be careful too because you take a right and we'll talk about that for the people who are who are empaths yeah what what was it that got you to that realization? Because I happen to agree with you wholeheartedly, but tell me what got you to that realization? Well, I think that it was also my own experience, my own life and my own journey that has brought me to this moment. I mean, this is why I'm, I'm absolutely, every fiber of my being knows that life is always on our side. It really is. Even when we think, why is this happening to me? How could this happen? Why am I suffering? Why am I ill? It literally is to give you something better. And, and I experienced it just like you have, all of us have. Mm. And in that moment, I realized, oh my God, the narrative of my story has completely changed, completely changed. And I freed myself. I literally freed myself of my suffering. And I thought, that's, there you go that's the reason it came like i'm telling you like a, i mean the, the sensation was incredible and and now you see when i tell people well, what, what is it that you do exactly because in the past i would say i'm a physical therapist i work with your physical body if you need to you know i'm a, also a performance specialist so i work with professional athletes if you need to get your body moving better faster more efficiently i'm i'm the person to contact but then i realized no no hold on a second, <laughs> there is this whole other spectrum of things that I need to incorporate. And that's, I think, really what pushed me to the next level and, and got me to really where we are right now. It's understanding that there's this full holistic approach that needs to be addressed. And, and when you do, and when you look at things with a different lens, my gosh, the world is your oyster. Well, I think that you know, the key what what helps if you keep going back to we're here to learn. So like with this is school, I think you know, and then um, then you then you say, okay, well if I'm in school, school kind of I would think was on was supposed to be on your side to teach you, right? So that's life. If life is school, life's on your side. And I think, but it is it is having the pauses to ask those questions, why am I having this pain in my stomach or my shoulder, or why am I having this brain tumor? And I think, unfortunately, we just are all going so fast. We don't, we just treat the pain or we treat the symptom or we just, we go to a doctor, let's say Western, which by the way, I think East meets West is best. I want to be clear on that. But I think that 
there are I agree with you there are emotional reasons why these things set off and then I think sometimes they manifest so bad that we have to bring in Western treatments mm -hmm. but still that's still you the core of it is is where the Eastern philosophies I think come in and we don't take mm -hmm. that time so with you what was it um what were your ailment ailments let's say and then what was your uh, like what was your aha moment in realizing wait these are the emotions that maybe happened in my past that triggered this. So I started experiencing at a really young age some serious um, digestive issues, which, you know, at 18, 19, 20, you're going out and you're eating, you know, not the greatest food, no. not, not the stuff that we'd eat at home, that's for sure, right. because I, I grew up in a very European family where, you know, meals are cooked at home and everything's homemade and everything else. So you know, I wanted to break free of that, I guess. And I wanted to make a statement. Plus you're, you know, with you're with your friends. It's it's completely sort of normal to to be out. And and I, I just realized that these symptoms were not normal. Like something was really um, upsetting me about the way I was feeling. And as a result of that, I said, wow, I'm normally a really upbeat, you know, positive person. But in certain moments, it's like you get these thoughts where it's like, okay, this is, terrible where is this all coming from and one thing sort of drew another and pulled another um into this whole situation and i started experiencing serious hormonal imbalances like really severe i mean some days i would be keeled over i would pass out blackout at school one time i was driving actually on the freeway going like really quite fast mm -hmm. and and i blacked out and thank god there was again this higher this higher, you know, force that kept me on the road. And literally, I woke up just in time to slam my brakes. But, you know, so I ended up in the hospital and they said, no, no, no. So this is serious. So Gabby, I have a question. So it started with digestion. So you knew at 18, 19, you're probably getting IBS or stomach aches or cramp, exactly. right? Okay. So then how did you know the passing out was hormonal? Well, I didn't until I wow, okay. until I got to hospital and they said, you know, everything looks really normal. But I said, but I normally feel like this around my cycle, which is which I kind of connected the dots. I said, something must be happening with my hormones. But from a you know, from sort of a lab standpoint, my body looked normal. Right. Like my blood looked normal. All the all the tests were absolutely within the ranges. So they were sort of, you know, baffled by all of this. And this kept continuing to happen. And so I said, well, look, something's seriously not right. And so I went to see all the best specialists and they said, you know what? There might be some psychological um, imbalances. You might be kind of exaggerating what actually is happening. Why don't we put you on some medication to suppress these, these emotions? And I said, oh, oh my gosh, no. Like, there is no way I, I will succumb to that because I knew there was in, inside. I knew there was something deeper that had to be resolved. And that was not the solution for me. How did you know that at such a young age, though? Well, here's the interesting part. Apparently, see, when you're not in tune with what you know or the gifts that you've been given until a moment like this happens, which is why I believe that this was all my blessing, I had been having visions and out-of-body experiences since the age of three. I would see things and I would I would recognize people's suffering and I would feel them. But that was never really something to talk about or it really wasn't the norm. And people in my family didn't really understand that I had these gifts. And so this this whole process of going through all of this trauma and physical um, you know, manifestation led me to a woman who was doing foot reflexology and I was so desperate. I said, I will do whatever yeah. it takes at this point. I mean, East, West, whatever. Whatever. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, you know, I won't take the pills to suppress what I feel because that's not where it's coming from, but I will do all the testing, etc. So I end up, my grandmother's listening to the Polish radio and she hears this Polish woman come on. I'm, I'm half Polish. So um, she says, listen, go and see this woman. She does foot reflexology. It's something to do with the feet and she's going to massage your feet. And I said, okay, well, my feet absolutely don't hurt. I think it's the only body part that really is okay. But look at, if this is going to help me, I am all for it. And so I went with a very open mind and I sat in the chair. 
she looks at my feet and she starts telling me like an x-ray machine exactly how I feel, where my pain is, Damn. what my cycles are like. I mean, it was so detailed that it literally blew me away. And I was a very, I still am a very binary person in some ways. It's like one plus one, you know, yes mm -hmm. and no. It's very mm -hmm. kind of black and white. And back then it was, you know, I was in finance. So it was really like, mm -hmm. all right, you need to tell me why. Explain this all to me. I don't understand. I'm going to come home and say, you know, somebody rubbed my feet and I feel better. I mean, this sounds ridiculous. But that's exactly what happened. Six months go by and I am symptom free. I am a new person. I have literally my energy levels have gone back to what they were. And here I am. This is the, the most incredible thing is I'm on a path of, you know, I'm going to be a financial in the financial industry. There are great plans for me. I am going to rock it in the business world. And here I am at a weekend course learning foot reflexology. Six months later, <laughs> I, I look back sometimes and I laugh because I say, look at that. We think we've got this all figured out, you know, which is why I know we are in earth school because I thought, here's my path. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I think I have it all figured out <laughs> mm -hmm. until, until. I fall in love with using my hands and helping people through touch. And I go through the entire reflexology course. I fly to Poland because she was she has her school in Poland. And I say, no, this is what this is what I meant to do. Like again, this overwhelming feeling of I could do this and I could rub people's feet and I will talk to people and want to know about them from morning to night. And I don't even need to get paid a single cent to do this. And and now it, did your family looking at you like you're crazy? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Because remember, and this is also why it, it it's all interwoven in my, in my belief is that look at, they come from the best they knew which was a world of scarcity and lack. And, you know, they crossed the Atlantic, left their both sides, you know, both yeah. my mom and dad left their lives behind in Europe in order to come to this continent to make a better life for themselves. So change doesn't come easily to people who've been through something like that. You know, I, yeah. I think we're so blessed to be, you know, to have the life we do here because we have that sense of stability and really that, that risk, you know, for us, I don't know, I feel like we are more um, capable of handling something like a change like that, you know, whereas for them, it's really difficult, because if you have something stable, and you have it in your hand, why are you changing this? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's, and it's to pursue the greater love, the the passion, the burning desire to, to help and to spread a message and look, you know, again, all of these things come full circle and make me understand that, you know, you are one person. And sometimes people say, but you have the opportunity to meet all these wonderful people. And I do, I really do. I am so blessed. But Vanda, my teacher was one person. And she allowed me to change everything inside of me so that I could change my world and everybody yeah. else that will come into my world. That's the power. Yeah, of one person. One person. Yep. Even just one action of one person. So, with, exactly. but Gabby, what were the emotions you discovered in you that triggered all of this imbalance? So I know we're dealing with the physical end. We did the reflexology, and so we, we start knocking some of that out. But what were some of the emotional things that triggered this? Well, you know, I was, I mean, my parents were divorced at a very young age. I was not even one. I was angry. I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. I came from a family of immigrants where English is not our first language. And it's not that I felt angry about it, but I think there was always this um, sense of resistance and difference. And, you know, back then it wasn't, um, you know, most people grew up here on this continent. They spoke English at home. They would eat certain things and we would be eating, you know, like fermented foods and you know, and it was all these like little differences that really, um, not not that I felt that I didn't fit in, but there was some sort of, you know, comparison that I would compare myself to other people. 
Um, I was angry that, you know, I had to split my time between my mom's house and my dad's house and my grandparents and all of these things, and they didn't get along at all. So yeah. I didn't understand that either. I don't, I don't know why, you know, two people don't get along. And when you're a child, all you see is love and joy. And so when you feel those emotions, then you kind of, that gets absorbed into mm -hmm. your body. And mm -hmm. so I think a lot of that stems from, you know, the environment that I was brought up in. Not that it wasn't loving and wonderful, but there were certain underlying emotions that I had absorbed. And you think that's what locked you up and began the, you know, messed up your cycles and then led to all Most definitely. But again, I don't look at it as, you know, back then, and, and I'm so grateful that I, I fell ill at such a young age, you know, because think about it, at 21, I was able to turn my yeah, no. around and find. Yep. No, it was a gift because look at what you've been able to do. So I, I get that aspect of it. But then as far as what did you do to knock out those charges, those charges of, you know, the anger, probably not feeling stable, not feeling like you belong. Right. So did you work on it, it seemed like it probably would have been more than just acupuncture and reflexology. Did you work yeah. on your mind and one hundred percent your emotions? I would feed my mind daily because when I started to realize and it was really through the reflexologist um teachings, because she is such she has such a holistic approach and I am so blessed to have that foundation as my start. She would always say, What is it that you want? Do you have a vision for yourself? What do you want to do, you know, next week or in a month or in a year? What is it that you want to do when you finish this course? Do you want to be a teacher or do you want to have your own clinic or what is it that you want to do? And so she allowed me to, to really develop that sense of number one, visualization, manifestation, building the life that you want through thought which was revolutionary because, you know, she's quite a bit older than I am. She comes from the same gem generation as my parents. And that in itself to me was so inspiring. I, I am so inspired by elder the elderly and people who have lived longer than I have. And when you find somebody, you know, in their 60s preaching these, and again, they're not modern, you know, they're not modern ways of thinking, but they've become sort of more, you know, known, I would say, um, I just find that so inspiring. Like you've lived your life like this, this is incredible, you know, well, like, and, no, it's okay. Go ahead. Yeah. No, and you've turned your life around because everybody has a story. And that's what I've learned is that we all have a story. Mm -hmm. Nobody's life came from a golden egg. I, I don't believe that no, for one second. No, no. No, and even the golden egg ones would tell you differently because I've met them. Exactly. And like, you know, like you have so much love or feeling in your our family. So believe me, um, there's a but there's a couple of things here, and I want to if I forget something, Kelsey, bring make me bring back. Um, when you talk about building the life you want through thought, because I think there's a lot of people, especially now with the pandemic, which you know some of experts have come on the show and said it's the great reset, which I love. So in this time of great reset, um, I think many of us, including myself, um, want to build a new life, uh, the life we want through thought. So I guess it comes down to figuring out what it is we want, but then in terms of you mentioned a couple of steps to actually manifest that. So can well, you- here's the thing. Yeah. It's not just- you know, I'm going to think of a purple Ferrari being in my driveway tomorrow morning, it's going to be there. It's not like that. How it is, is it's very complex and it's a little bit more um, intricate than just that. And that's why RPT, Regenerative Pathway Therapy, was born from this idea that I didn't heal myself just through, you know, the physical, the physical help and the energy reset and thinking how my life is going to be. I had to do all these other things that is a constant evolution really of where we're going. So first of all, I, I would love to offer this question to anybody listening is, are you ready to heal? Are you ready to do whatever it takes because it's going to get really uncomfortable at yeah. times. 
Yes. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Often. Yes. And when you have to face the things that you've perhaps been suppressing and running away from and turning a cheek to, you've got to look these things and you've got to embrace them. And you've got to start to understand them with a new narrative, with a new perspective. And that's not as easy as it sounds. It doesn't have to be difficult, but but it's going to require that you are ready for this. And so, you know, that to me was a pivotal question that I was asked. Are you ready to do this at 20 years old? Are you ready to do whatever it takes? And I said, yes, because I had gotten to that point where I knew I had to do something and it had to be drastic and it had to be now. And I was all in. I am willing to change all the products that I use for non-toxic products that are, you know, disrupting my hormones. I am willing to remove things from my diet that are not benefiting the floor of my gut. I am willing to meditate. I am willing to move my body every single day in whatever capacity I feel is right for me for that day. I don't do the same thing every single day. And I'm willing to wake up and to start my day with something that feeds my mind. I'm willing to do those things to feel good. Okay. So that's step one. Now what's step, step two? One. So as you start to elevate and as you start to gain energy in your physical body by doing these things, your thoughts become different. You know, when you're down and out and you're not feeling well and you're achy and you're crampy and you're feeling down, what are the thoughts that run through your mind? Oh, this sucks. Why me? You know, all the disempowering questions. But when you start to physically feel better, you say, all right, I see the light. I can start to see certain things. And you start to become creative. You start to have a different vision. You start to now think differently. I see this process every single day in the clients that I meet. It's incredible. Your expressions are different. The way you approach a relationship is different. Maybe now you're starting to realize that, look, my mother did the best she could. My father didn't know any better. He mm -hmm. was going through his own set of trauma that he didn't have the capacity or whatever it is to resolve. So now you come with a different you know, mindset, a different sense of compassion and empathy for the people perhaps that you blamed your whole life. Mm -hmm. And what does that do? That starts a positive momentum. That starts to build. It's like a stacking effect of all these things that you do, these tiny little shifts. And it's, and it's an awareness. Look, sometimes I would say, mm, no, that doesn't work quite right for me. I don't like the sound of that music. That's not right. I'm going to have to change it to this. But that also requires a, a sense of being present, a sense of awareness and commitment to this end goal of me being my absolute best self. And then from that stage, you say, all right, now I can see myself helping 20 people a day. I can see myself having incredible conversations with people that I can lift up. And so I want to tell you an amazing story that just happened. It's okay. so fresh in my mind that I think it's so relevant Please. to what we're talking about. So this book, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, has been literally with me my whole life since I discovered this path, really. I call it my whole life because it's like my rebirth. And every day I study this book, this pay, this book was written in 1903, which again, to me is, is so fascinating. And it's only 26 pages. And every day I study just one page from this book. And I've had this thing for years. I have multiple copies everywhere in my purse, by my bedstand. I mean, everywhere. And the other day I had, I, I cut my toe really deeply and it was so deep and I tried everything. I put all the natural remedies that I have, but anyway, God, it probably was infected because that night it was like throbbing and the, even the, just the sheet touching it killed my toe. So mm. I said, okay, tomorrow morning, I've got to go to a walk-in. I've got to get this toe sorted. It's like, it's pretty badly cut. Anyway, I have this book by my nightstand and I said, hold on a minute though. Let me practice what I preach here every day. So I said, listen, I'm up all night anyways. I can't sleep. This toe is killing. It's keeping me up. And I said, no, no, no. I'm going to try the, the 
as a man think it basically he goes into a chapter about wellness and how you can cure yourself if you believe and i said i believe all this stuff really i'm going to heal my toe by tomorrow morning i am going to wake up and my toe is going to be sealed i'm sending all the lymphatic fluid there to help with the infection to help with the bacteria that perhaps is already in my system and tomorrow morning i am going to wake up and that toe is not going to hurt me any longer and i kept repeating this and i kept feeling that toe that was literally healing all night i did this because i couldn't sleep in the morning so help me god my toe is like brand new like nothing happened to that skin it was a tiny bit pink but the cut was closed up it was not throbbing and it was totally i could walk on it i wasn't limping around it was the craziest thing that i have done for myself in a long while and i said oh my god and all i did all day was say thank you for showing me this that i can heal myself i uh, gabby i had a friend who <clears throat> had a I believe it or not, it was a reality show producer and she and one of those crazy reality shows where every, like, all the contestants are throwing contestants cast are throwing wine at each other and, and this massive fight breaks out and she got a spiked heel that went through her foot and it was so badly infected that the doctors did one of these things where they drew a line i don't know if you've heard this before but they, they actually drew with ink a line on her leg and said if the infection goes past this line we're gonna have to amputate oh my god and she did exactly what you just described. She said, I just visualized and visualized. I said, like, it's not going to go past this point. I'm talking, and you know what? It didn't. And she was fine. And obviously, thank God she didn't lose her foot. But, you know, so I've heard of this before. And I think it's uh, amazing. And w in, in this book, does this book go over ways to practice that? Or are there other ways? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. This is all about... Um, see, here it is on page 14, Effective Thought on Health and the Body. And it's short little chapters. I mean, the book is only 26 pages, and it's all of these different you know, areas of your life, whether it's your financial status or your health, your relationships, your work, whatever it is, and why certain things happen and how to reverse that through your thought. I'm just and laughing. Gabby, you... I'm laughing because, Gabby, we had so much of this figured out. You know, this is 1903, and you think of the things some of the Indians were doing, and you think of some of the things that were done in ancient China. <laughs> it's like, I just think, we just, you know, we just, we just get so aggressive, and we get so ahead of ourselves. It's, you know, let's conquer, let's have more, let's, you know, it's, a, and it comes from, a, you know, it doesn't necessarily come from a bad place, but this is all the stuff that, you know, covered all this stuff up. So today, it's just give me a pill, or, you know, exactly. cut that out with surgery, and, and. It's that's so I'm fascinated. I'm going to totally pick up that book. And like, oh my goodness, 26. I'm in like the fact it's nice and short. I, you know, this is a problem for me, Gabby. And, and, and I'm hoping that this speaks to other people's brains who uh, never shut off. And I think the younger generation, because the way their brains have been trained has been almost ADD like, you know, even we know from producing movies and, Everything's got to be fast, fast edits. It started with MTV. My generation started 20 or 30 years ago. I was working there when we did. Um, but I think for me, it's hard because of that, my brain always running to be able to sit there all night. You know, even for me, when I meditate, it's really hard. I do it. I try to do TM for 20 minutes in the morning. And a lot of times my brain, I'll be doing my mantra and then my brain shifts. And next thing you know, I don't know, I'm talking about you know, who won American Idol like <laughs> season 2012. <laughs> and I'm like, Durr! and I get, so do you have ways to keep your brain in that place? Because I know that's hard for me. Well, so meditation, when I say I meditate, I don't always sit in lotus, you know, I'm still and I don't move. I mean, meditation can take on different forms. Meditation can be when you walk, for example, in a quiet place where you're not distracted, where you can focus on, you know, the fact that you are trying to connect with yourself and trying to connect with your thoughts more importantly. But a meditation can be, for example, when you're in the shower. I mean, why do our best ideas, inventions, solutions come to us when we're in the shower? Yeah. Because it's a state of meditation, right. literally. Yep. 
it's, you know, it's a form of, of self-help, self-care, self-love. I, throughout the pandemic, when people were calling and they were scared and they didn't know what to do, and, and I would say, look it, when you get in a funk, when you get in a rut, just take a shower. Take a shower. You always say that. I always shower. say it just to please. When I see someone who's depressed and their apartment or their house is a mess, if they're a mess, I'm like, okay, first order of business, clean this place up, nice hot shower, get the toxins off your body. You just always feel like a little better, but you're right. You have that time. I feel like with working out too, because it's kind of mindless, just you're doing your exercises, you're on your little routine, and then you get these great ideas and breakthroughs. But I agree, the shower is a wonderful place. Wonderful. Like when you're, exactly, when you're working out or, you know, if you're listening to a podcast. I mean, I listen to Better Together, honestly, uh, every day because mm -hmm. I always learn something. And to me, that's my form of meditation. I love to listen to people. I love to listen to their thoughts. I mean, I have a journal and I don't stop writing in the journal. It's always, there's one here, there's one in my purse. And if I have something that comes to me, I write it down. If I'm stuck and I don't know, if I'm doing an interview, for example, and I say, you know what, I, I want to prepare and I just want to be my best self. I write everything down. Just unload it from your brain. Even if it means I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Unload it. Unload it on the page. Rip out the page and then toss it in the trash and be done with it. Acknowledge it that you might feel nervous or scared or afraid or whatever it is, but acknowledge it, let it pass through you and say, it's okay, it's going to get better because I have the capacity to be better. And we're all here learning. I mean, this is school. And, and, and I feel like school, there is, there aren't any mistakes. You're learning. When you're in the experimental mode of your life, look it, you're learning a lesson. What's the worst that can happen? So, so you journaling, I love that. Um, when you going back to your original therapy, and this was the other part that I wanted to bring up. So, so is what did you do to knock out those charges? Was it was it journaling? Was it did you do EMDR tapping? You know, all, there's all different ways to get all that anger and fear and all those things you had in your system. Did you do anything to get it out, or was it just verbal therapy? I mean, I help myself really. I. I consider Vanda like she was my physical therapist, but she was also my emotional, mental, spiritual guide. And, you know, I would, I was very active all the time. I spent a lot of time in nature. I was outdoors a lot, a lot. And I found solace in being really by myself, actually. Mm -hmm. As much as I'm a social person and I love people and I love being in contact with people. And I love connecting people. I also need the time to be on my own. Yeah. And when you're in nature and you connect to the stillness and the power and you allow it to come through you, I mean, in times where you need somebody, I urge everybody to do this exercise. Have somebody on your, you know, on your, your, um, in your phone that you can call that will be that person for you that you can lift that you that you know you can make a call to and they'll lift you up there's got to be one person and if you don't have that person yet in your life be that to somebody else mm -hmm. i find that if you give of yourself it's the circle of life it's the circle of energy it's how we were constructed and it's a law of the universe when you start the giving process, you are also ready to now receive. And this was a huge part of my healing journey really is I started to volunteer. I started to go to missions where I would be a volunteer at a soup kitchen, for example. I would put together baskets of food for people in need and go hand deliver them. And when you see people in situations that are far worse than your own, because there is always somebody that has it worse than you. Always. Always. And when you are and when you look at that and you see it for your own eyes, I mean, it puts everything into perspective, really. So there are so many ways that even if you don't have the means to perhaps, you know, go to to a therapist and 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 spend the money, there are ways. And this is really my part of my mission is 
to spread the, this knowledge and this information to people, to allow them to be empowered with the fact that you don't need to spend a lot of money to get better. There are things you can do right now that can uplift you, change your spirit, change the frequency of your health. I mean, look at us when we were, you know, healing Maria's mom, we, we went on a Zoom call together. Yeah, it was wonderful. You know, who is, who is in your Rolodex of people that you can call, that you can say, look at, I'm going through something. Mm -hmm. Do you have five minutes? Maybe it's that yeah. person. And it's got to be somebody who lifts you up, not just, you know, sits in the doo-doo with you, but yeah. somebody who's going to lift you up to say, look at, go and have a shower. You know, sometimes just like that, somebody just to spark the life back into mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I think making it clear to that person too, this is what's going on. A lot of times we assume, why isn't that friend know what kind of pain I'm in? Why isn't this loved one? I think it's saying to them, hey, I am really, really need a moment. I'm really down. I'm at my wit's end or I'm, you know, I'm in a terrible, terrible space and I just need you as a friend to talk to. Can you give me these five minutes? And if that person is the friend you think they are, then obviously they're going to respond. And you know what? The, the reality is that us as humans, we really i mean living is giving i i honestly believe that so the person on the other phone on the other line is is also getting something out of this call they want to be there for you they truly do i think the nature of our spirit is such that we want to give i've seen some of the meanest selfish cruelest people when they give they just they can't brag about it enough. They feel like they're a hundred feet tall and they're just not aware enough to know that, man, if you just did this more, you know, I know you think you would lose money and time, and but you wouldn't. But yeah, I agree. I know it, it can be selfish in a way too, because you feel so good when you do give. Um, but yeah, that, I think that's an easy thing. So we have journaling, going to nature, volunteering and giving, which I think is tremendous. Um, is there anything else that you I love I love that the there you you don't have to spend all of the money to get the help you need. I I know it does make life easier, please. I and I my heart goes out for Western medicine people, especially that need the treatment and they can't get it or afford it. I that's a whole other discussion. But I think the stuff you're talking about are the things that I apply and need to apply more of. You know, I don't think of when I think of my shortcomings, I'm not thinking of what checks I'm going to write and what experts I'm going to work with. I'm thinking, you know, I need to do my burn journal. I need to do my journal. I need to be in nature more. Mm -hmm. I need to go sit with nature and ask the universe what I want. All the stuff I hear on this show from you, Gabby, and the other experts. And it's not writing a check, you know. So I, I love the hearing those thing things. too, um, you know, if you have the choice to make better, you know, decisions in your nutrition and what you choose to fuel your body with, mm -hmm. I mean, we are always given the choice. The choice does exist. And so I feel like in a society where we're used to everything really fast and quick yes. and, and, you know, just let's get it done and let's just put something down so we don't feel hunger. I think we need to change that narrative as well and say, all right, but is this serving me? Is this increasing the yeah. frequency of my body? Yeah. I, I always say like food first. I mean, you can't possibly begin to feel enlightened and and energetic if you're fueling on sugar coffee and pizza all day long you know like those are foods that are very dense they're low density foods low frequency foods cut that stuff out of your diet first you just described my diet no but it's true no 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 but it's 100 percent true yeah. all these toxins that we put in our bodies and again we just because it's all about more more go push and as a guy, you're taught, get up, come on, fight, you know, and um, and all that's great and can serve you. But yeah, we're not taking those pauses to go, really, I'm putting this in my body. And how does it make me feel? Yeah. You know, for me, coffee makes me feel great. And then afterwards, I'm exhausted. And, you know, like I, yeah. But, you know, and I say, listen, everything in moderation it comes back to that original question. Are you ready to do whatever it takes? I'm ready, but if you have, if you say, all right, I'm going to start cutting back instead of having five coffees a day, I'll have two coffees a day for a yeah. week. Look, you're already doing better. Wake up in the morning and start off, have this already ready, a 
big glass of room temperature water, yep. add a little bit of fresh lemon juice to it, have it ready for you. I always say like if in a world of conveniences, make it convenient for you too to be, yeah. you know, in a, in a situation where it's easy just to grab the water first and get yourself hydrated first thing in the morning. And everyone's body is different because I hear other people when they have coffee at different times, it affects them differently. But for me, I have one a day and I usually wait till midday because I know I'm starting to crash. And then that takes me through and that's it. And some days I don't have it, but but most days it's just that one. I If I do more than two, forget it. I'm like, I would be mm -hmm. shaking. But um, but yeah, I think the water I have next to all my beds, I have um, water bottles that are filled and uh, just, yeah, and it's just... I, I, and then the lemon is so great. Um, you know, what do you think of, because like, I look at Maria's dad. This guy is just a marvel at mm -hmm. 76. What I mean, he's <laughs> I'm looking today. I'm seeing these giant, like huge logs. <laughs> I see him like, I'm like he's unbelievable. He's but his diet is that uh, European diet of mainly uh, vegetables, low sugar fruits, um meat but little meat mm -hmm. very very low uh Beans, bad yeah. carbs mm -hmm. yeah lots of legumes and his whole thing is he loves garlic uh lemon and he, and olive oil he's like those are his like three hacks <laughs> of that he's big believer in I mean, he could have made millions on just, you know, well, the European hat. I mean, well, well, also, listen, yeah, like, no joke, 54 years, type 1 diabetic. Crazy. All of the people COVID he survivor. knew. I mean, yeah, all the people that he was diagnosed with are gone. And at the end of their lives, they were limbless. They were blind. And this maniac is, <laughs> like, he's he's... He's probably like what you would see in a well fit 28 year old as far as like his actual. No joke. Yeah. And I've never seen, unless a few times he's had a flu, I've never seen him nap. He is just, but it's his, he's always put, I always said to him, he always put like premium gasoline in his body. And he's 100%. the best. And so even at MIT, the doctors there like will ask us every year or so, they say, can we study him? Can we get, you know. And it's never convenient. We probably should let them. But I'm like, I don't think there's anything to study other than just he eats, study his diet and his, and he moves and he has a lot of movement mm -hmm. and that's it. And he's like, he's life hack diabetes. Totally. And the other thing that I love about him is that he's always smiling. Yeah. Always oh, upbeat. Yeah. always upbeat. And that's the other thing too. We were obviously right. Like I think in our childhoods, we were just starting to learn that for men, I'll speak for us to to not show tears like my dad was like slapped across the face like the last time he cried when he was like 11 saying you don't cry and then we got to a place of oh no no that's not healthy so air all your feelings and that and with costa i noticed that yeah oh my goodness he cries mm -hmm. but you know what he also does he also doesn't sit in it so he'll he one of i remember the one of our first dogs that he called presvitera greek for queen he loved Noel, loved her. And we were on a Skype call. It was when it was at the end. And um, I just remember he like came up to the screen and, you know, he looked and said, oh, okay. And he just walked away. And, um, and as I got to know him better, he just doesn't believe in sitting. Yeah. Like he was not going to sit on the recliner and stare at a picture of his wife and cry every day. You know, he cried and he cried and at the funeral he cried. Um, but I knew, I said, let's have a celebration of life at the house. We can be with his friends and his family and let's play Greek music. And let's, and we did that. And then the next day he's, you know, he's up and he's doing the garden. And now, he, you know, we're talking about different little projects we're going to do. And, but yeah, he just doesn't want to sit in it. He feels the sadness, but he's like, I'm not going to sit in this. I'd rather put, I'm going to think about happy things. I'm not, he has this way of switching his brain from going to mm -hmm. thinking about sad things to, and sometimes as artists, Gabby, and now I think this is really good for the younger generation here because it's a generation of artists. If you notice with millennial and Gen Z, I think even more than millennial, it's like they only want to be artists. They don't want to, mm -hmm. or they are artists. Let me just be fair to them. Maybe they are just artists, not just, maybe they are artists mm -hmm. and they're not, they don't have other practical 
pursuits and maybe even that's wrong of me to say because maybe art is practical i don't know but when you're an artist you're hypersensitive and sometimes it's kind of sexy to sit in the pain you know that's the whole tragic poet tragic artist right and um but it's really not so sexy <laughs> and when you look at costa who just knows how to go okay no i'm not gonna sit in this i'm gonna get up and move i'm gonna think of happy things i'm gonna put on happy music i'm gonna watch a happy sport um, but he also doesn't ignore his emotions. Like he'll like, no, like you said, he acknowledges it. Yeah, yeah. He acknowledges it. And he cries. Yeah. And I'm mm-hmm. sad. Yeah. But then he makes a choice. Am I going to sit in this right. and just be sad and wither away and go to nothing mm-hmm. or commit suicide or slowly commit suicide? Or am I going to get up and, and move and, 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 th- and switch my brain over to happy things? And um, I think it also, again, there's an awareness we need to all have is is this food I'm putting or this chemical I'm putting in my body causing me unhappiness is um are the people I'm keeping company with causing me unhappiness? Is the maybe the job I'm in causing me, you know? Mm-hmm. So but again I think it starts with that pause. Totally. I was just gonna say that it all comes from us being aware of where we are, how we're feeling and Am I doing things that light me up or does this kind of bring me down? Yeah. Yes. And we you don't, know, and again, finds joy in, in cooking in you know, telling a joke or smiling. Every, with yeah. people. <laughs> he you know, just makes me great. laugh. He's all in for everything. I was like, really hey, Costa, I think we're going to, he doesn't like, like baseball really. And I said, <laughs> hey, Costa, um, and I always have to lie and say, Costa, there's these people who invited us. So it's it's a business thing. Anyway. You have you have to go. They're expecting Maria's dad. Okay, Aww. okay. Aww. He's just yeah, but he's like okay. Oh yeah, we go. It's okay. We'll go. Yeah, it's and the and it'll go and so it'll be the life good. of the party. One hundred percent. So you know, and I think that's truly there's the secret to that. Like that's part of his secret to life yeah, is, is listen, just be up for it. You know, like you might not love it, and it might not be what you want to do right now, but just go try it. If you don't try it on for size, I mean, how will you know, you know? This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or mariamenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.